Here we're going to look at a nice inequality problem from the 1982 International Math Olympiad. And I usually shy away from inequality problems, but maybe in the future I'll try to practice solving them to improve my strategies and skills at solving these type problems so that we can look at more of them on the channel. Okay, so what do we want to do here? We've got a sequence of real numbers, so I'll call that x0, x1, x2, so on and so forth. So in other words, the sequence is xn as n runs between 0 and infinity. And then it satisfies these two conditions. x0 is 1, and then xn plus 1 is bigger than 0, so that means we have positive real numbers, and less than xn, and that's going to be true for all n bigger than or equal to 0. So in other words, the sequence is decreasing, or really non-increasing. We've got two things to prove. So let's look at the first one. We want to prove that there exists a natural number n such that if little n is bigger than or equal to big N, this sum, which is x0 squared over x1 plus x1 squared over x2, all the way up to xn minus 1 squared over xn, is bigger than or equal to 3.99. Okay, so looking at this, you maybe want to think through the catalog of standard inequality results, and you'll see that the left-hand side of this nearly looks like something called the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. And so perhaps we can use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality along with some other arguments to get this red dot proven. So let's maybe first recall what the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality is. Okay, now we've got the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality on the board. So it says for all real numbers ui and vi, the following inequality holds. So this sum of the square of the ui's times the sum of the square of the vi's is bigger than or equal to the sum of the product of the ui's and vi's, and then you square that. Okay, so keeping this inequality in mind, as well as the shape of the left-hand side of our goal inequality, the real question is can we make any part of our goal inequality look like one of the parts of this? And in fact, we can if we carefully choose u and v. So let's maybe first set ui equal to xi minus 1 over the square root of xi. And then we'll set vi equal to the square root of xi. But notice if we square ui, then we'll get xi minus 1 squared over xi. But that's exactly what we have right here, the sum of those types of terms. Okay, great. So pushing these two values for ui and vi into our Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, we have the following result. So this sum right here will become x0 squared over x1 plus all the way up to xn minus 1 squared over xn. I'll write it out like that so it looks like our problem instead of with summation notation, although it's the same. And then this guy right here will be x1 plus all the way up to xn because we're squaring the square root of xi. And then here, when we take the product of ui and vi, that radical xi will cancel. So we have this guy right here is going to be bigger than or equal to x0 plus all the way up to xn minus 1 quantity squared. So notice this term and this term are fairly similar. It's just they're shifted a little bit differently. Okay, so notice that our goal thing can easily be solved in terms of these two other objects, which means we really need to just bound these two other objects. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. We've got x0 squared over x1 plus all the way up to xn minus 1 squared over xn is now bigger than or equal to x0 plus all the way up to xn minus 1 quantity squared over x1 plus all the way up to xn. So let's maybe bring that to the top and then we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board we arrived at the following inequality. So our goal was bigger than or equal to this sum x0 up to xn minus 1 squared over x1 up to xn squared. 
but notice there are a lot of terms in common between this numerator and the denominator. So maybe we should shove all of those terms in common into one object. And that's exactly what we'll do. Maybe we'll call that object S. And so what are the terms in common? They are gonna be X1 plus all the way up to Xn minus one. So let's maybe say that we're gonna set S equal to that. Maybe we're saying S for sum. But now we can rewrite this numerator as x naught plus s, but let's recall x naught is one, so this is gonna be one plus s quantity squared. And then this denominator is going to be s plus this last term xn. So we've got s plus xn like that. So next up what I wanna do is multiply out this numerator and then spread it into two pieces so that we can start making some inequality type arguments. So I'm gonna write this as one plus s squared over s plus xn plus 2s over s plus xn, like that. And then from there, especially this second term, it looks like it might be nice to divide the numerator and the denominator by s. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So that, along with the fact that this one plus s squared would actually be a little bit nicer if we were able to somehow take the square root of it, but we can with the arithmetic geometric mean, that gives us some motivation for how to rewrite these two terms. So let's maybe do that. So we've got that this is equal to one plus s squared over two times two over s plus xn. So notice that's the arithmetic mean of one and s squared. Then like I said, we're gonna divide the numerator and the denominator by s of this second term. So that's gonna give us two over one plus xn over s. So now that we've got this denominator looking like one plus xn over s, so I'll do the same kind of thing, but here I just have to factor an s out of the denominator. So that's gonna give me one plus s squared over two, and then we'll have two over s, and then one over one plus x sub n over s, and then we have this is plus two over one plus x sub n over s. Now, like I said before, we can use the arithmetic geometric mean inequality on this to say that this object right here is bigger than or equal to the square root of one times s squared. So I'll write that as the square root of s squared. Now we have that's times two over s times one over one plus x sub n over s, and then we still have plus two over one plus x sub n over s, like that. But now notice some things cancel. This square root of s squared cancels with this, and then those two guys add up. So this is gonna be equal to four over one plus x sub n over s. Now all we need to do is get some sort of bound on that object, which is a little bit simpler. But let's move that up and then we'll finish off this first part. So on the last board, we got our goal object down so that it was bound below by four over one plus x sub n over s, where s was this sum from x sub one up to x sub n minus one. Now we would like to work on this a little bit. Notice it's a bit tricky to work with x sub n over s, but s over x sub n is a lot simpler. So let's look at that. s over x sub n, that's gonna be x1 over xn plus x2 over xn plus all the way up to xn minus one over xn. But now using this baked in inequality right here, we can replace each of these numerators with x sub n and we'll, we, we will create something smaller. So that means that this is bigger than or equal to xn over xn plus all the way up to xn over xn. So that's just the sum of a bunch of ones, but how many ones? There are n minus one ones. So this is equal to n minus one. But now inverting that, we see that that means that x sub n over s is less than or equal to one over n minus one. 
So now if we replace x sub n over s with one over n minus one, we make the denominator of this thing larger, which makes the whole thing smaller. So in other words, this is bigger than or equal to four over one plus one over n minus one. But now notice we can do some algebra on that pretty easily, and we'll get that this is equal to uh, four over n over n minus one. In other words, four times n minus one over n. But now notice we can simplify that a little bit more. That's the same thing as four minus four over n. And then recall our goal is for that to be bigger than or equal to 3.999. So let's see what that would take. We can subtract four from both sides. That tells us that minus four over n will be bigger than or equal to 0 0.001. But let's see, 0 0.001 is one over a thousand. So we've got this is less than negative one over a thousand. But now we can take the reciprocal of this and negate this. And what we'll end up with is that our little n has to be bigger than or equal to 4,000. And so that tells us that our capital N, which is what we're looking for here, which is the smallest such little n, will be in fact 4,000. So that finishes the first part of this problem. Now let's move on to the second. So for the next part of the problem, we wanna find a special sequence that makes our goal sum less than four. That means four is playing a pretty important role for this kind of object built out of a sequence like this. Well, generally for these math contest problems, there's a fairly simple answer. And so that means we should probably try this with a fairly simple sequence. That's exactly what we'll do. So let's try this with maybe a geometric sequence. So we'll take x sub n to be equal to r to the n. Notice we need r to be less than or equal to one and bigger than zero in order for our x sub n to satisfy these rules right here. So we'll keep that in mind. But now let's notice that what we need is the square of one term over the next term. So in other words, we need to look at something like this, x sub k squared over x sub k plus one. But notice that'll end up being r to the 2k over r to the k plus one. Okay, and we can simplify that a little bit. Notice that's gonna be r to the k times r to the k over r times r to the k we can maybe cancel this out with this and we're left with r to the k minus one, like that. Plugging this over here, let's see what we have. So that tells us that x zero squared over x one plus all the way up to x n minus one squared over x n will in this case be equal to r minus one plus r to the zero plus r to the one all the way up to, that's gonna be r to the n minus two. But that's a little bit tricky to work with, so maybe we'll factor a one over r out of that, and that's gonna leave us with r to the zero, which is one, plus r to the one all the way up to r to the n minus one. Now we can use the standard summation rule for a finite geometric series to rewrite this thing as one over r, and then we have one minus r to the n over one minus r. And now the game is just to pick values of r. We can probably just try reciprocals of natural numbers um, and plug them into this until we get one where we have it's less than four. And you don't have to try so hard. If you plug in r equals one half, you'll see that this portion equals two times one minus one over two to the n over one over one over two. So that's gonna be equal to four times one minus one over two to the n, but that's clearly less than four for all values of n. So it looks like r equals half works. But if you try r equals third, it doesn't work. And I'll let you guys try that for yourselves. Okay, so that finishes off both parts of this problem, and that's a good place to stop.